Hello everyone, I'm Bill Harris and this is Life Questions. We're happy you could join us for a discussion about the many questions and concerns you have about life and our attempts to provide you with biblical solutions. Now each week we monitor the questions that you send us and invite a local group of ministers to research the answers and then share them with us here in the studio. And we have convened such a distinguished panel of ministers who are present with us now to answer those questions. I'd like to introduce them to you at this time. First, Branham, uh, Nathan Branham, that is, pardon me, of Grace Fellowship Church in Lima, Ohio, followed by Darwin Dunton of Mount Tabor Church of God in Salina. Then we have Michael Wyckoff of Joy Harvest Fellowship in Lima, Ohio. Rounding up our panel is Pastor Dave Burkhardt of Westminster United Methodist Church, of course, in Westminster. Gentlemen, we're happy you could be with us today. And uh, as we get started, one of the questions that's being buzzed about is concerning itself with the tribulation period. Someone wrote in noting that <clears throat> Pat Robertson of the 700 Club just recently said that Christians will go through the tribulation period. Uh, research has shown that most Christians believe that is not the case. However, nobody can be dogmatic. Some say we will completely avoid the tribulation. Some say that we will go through the first half of it. And others say that, of course, uh, they're, they're most uh, post-trib uh, position on that. And they, have, they each have their sets of scriptures that support them on that. Gentlemen, how say you? <laughs> Chime in on this. <clears throat> Well, I'll go first, um, okay. <laughs> unless you were pointing that no. way. Um, no, uh, I looked it up at, in, I had just done a, a sermon series on the book of Revelation and, and noticed that when, um, when the letter went out to the church of Philadelphia, um, that it was stated in that letter that Jesus was not going to let uh, the church go through difficult times, that he would remove them before that time came. And so, um, so I sort of leaned on that, um, that interpretation of scripture that it would be a pre-tribulation rapture that we would go through. However, uh, I also warned our folks that, you know, we need to be ready in case that's not the case. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if, if there is a, a post-tribulation rapture, we need to be able to stand strong and know that we can, we can endure through that. But God's going to be there to help us yeah. through it. And I know that a lot of people who are pre-tribbers like to use um, examples in the Bible. Of course, uh, before the flood came, God evacuated eight souls, Noah and his family. Uh, before fire and brimstone rained down on Sodom and Gomorrah, God got all the righteous people out. Those are examples that sets some sort of a pattern is what their argument is about that. You are a post-tribber. Explain your position and how, how you, <laughs> yours differs from that. That's because I like being different from everyone. <laughs> so, okay. No, I, what, uh, basically when I was in college, you know, I just studied the scriptures and I, I came to that conclusion that um, as I look at all the warnings of Jesus, um, it just, it keeps warning us that we're going to go through it. I mean, Matthew 24, uh, is, is a prime example mm -hmm. of that. And uh, so then I, I came to that conclusion and then, uh, then I found out that my college uh, theology professor was the same way. So, you know, great minds think alike, I guess. But, <laughs> but, then, but then I heard the history of the pre-tribulation rapture. And I actually did a little research because I wanted to share it with you. Yes. Because the pre-tribulation rapture is actually a fairly new theology. Um, probably less than 200 years old. Now, mm -hmm. you're saying oh, that's a long time, but you got to remember that we're talking 2,000 years here. And uh, found out in 1824, there was a girl named McDonald uh, that was at a revival service in Glasgow, Scotland. And during that revival service, they must have been talking about the second coming of Jesus because mm -hmm. she, uh, she went home and had a dream or a vision and she went and she shared it with a pastor there named Darby and uh, heard about the, uh, the, that Jesus was going to come before the tribulation. Well, he liked it. So then he started sharing it and he shared it with a man named D.L. Moody, at <laughs> the Moody Bible Institute. Yes. And so he took it and he started sharing it as well. So 
it, it is primarily a Western theology. You, were, you made the comment, I disagree with you on a little bit on this, mm -hmm. when you said uh, research has shown that the majority of the people hold to a pre-tribulation rapture. The majority of the Western church believes that. Very well put. The well worldwide put. church uh, outside the Western mm -hmm. area does not believe that. And the reason is, is because they're going through tribulation. See, we in, in the United States, we have avoided a lot of tribulation. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, uh, so we don't see it. So, I mean, l let's be honest. Do you like the idea that you're not going to go through the tribulation? The answer is yes. <laughs> I, mean, I like that idea. Um, but, I, but I also agree with you as well. I'm, I, I lean towards post-tribulation rapture. However, with that said, I'm more of a pan triver meaning it'll all pan out in the end. <laughs> yes. And so I tell my people, you know, be prepared for pre because you don't know when Jesus is coming back. You don't even right. know when you're going to die. That's right. But if, if things turn sour and we do go through it, you also need to be prepared for post. Mm -hmm. You need to be prepared mm -hmm. to see Jesus at any time. Does that mean then um, that we should be buying special survivor kits to take us through the tribulation period? Oh, man. I don't know. I'm not touching that one. <laughs> no, I didn't want you to mention any names, but there are people who, have, who do hold to this belief, and they do have within the confines of their homes certain survival kits because, because of that, because of what you expressed. Would you advocate that, that activity, I guess? Not for the sake of, of rapture, but I think you should always have a, a, a savings account or a, <laughs> or, or, I mean, I grew up on the farm. You always had food lined up. Sure, sure. And if you don't, you're going to be in big trouble. So um, as far as when Jesus is coming back or uh, for the tribulation, mm -hmm. if you want to, that's fine. I mean, it might come in handy someday. Um, I got to be very careful in saying this because I think the, the, the key is you need to be, when people start to predict when Jesus is coming back, that mm -hmm. goes so against scripture. Yes, it does. And yet all the time people are predicting when Jesus is coming back and everybody goes crazy on yeah. this. 88 reasons why Christ is coming back in 1988. Yeah. Uh, the Y2K in 2000. Yeah. Uh, I used to live in Finley and, and there was a, a billboard that was outside of Finley for a while saying that Jesus is coming back on such and such date. And, and I'm, I'm literally going, wait a minute. The Bible says no one knows the date or the yeah. hour, but yeah. yet we all go crazy on this stuff. T two bits of instructions the Lord gave us on this, wasn't, 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 it, wasn't it that way that he said one, do not set a date or do not predict a right. date. But two, he said, look for the signs. He did tell us to do that. Mm -hmm. Look for the signs. Mm -hmm. So where does that come into play? <clears throat> yeah, Bill, you know, I, I would say <clears throat> um, absolutely. And, and there are different theologies on this issue as, as you so graciously stated. You know, some people believe that it's gonna take place uh, you know, Matthew 24, some people say that's in the future. I take a position that it's, it's already happened. Most of Matthew 24 has happened. The point is, I think, to be ready for his coming. But you know what I hear in this, this question mm -hmm. is fear. Ah. It's fear. I, mm -hmm. I, I don't, I don't want to go through this. And, and that, so I adopt a belief that... Yeah, so, so you know, Pat that. says that I'm going <clears throat> to go through this. And uh, while you have a spectrum of belief, I think... Uh, each person needs to uh, be prepared in faith, you know, whether the Lord's going to return, whether you're going to go through tribulation. Uh, but also, uh, fear of suffering, I think, is, is a big issue on, uh, when it comes to end times or anything uh, regarding this particular topic. So I think we, we've got to, if it's not big, you know, escape suffering or uh, dealing with trauma right now, I think suffering is, is a key factor and fear of it that that needs to be answered by every Christian individually. You know, there are some people who are so serious about this issue, whatever their particular bent or slant is, that they refuse to fellowship with certain other Christians who don't believe right. like they do. Mm -hmm. And I see nothing in the word of God that says you must base the criteria on fellowship as to whether somebody agrees with you on the issue of the tribulation. No. What, what do you think? No, <clears throat> I totally agree. And uh, I used to, for a long time, agree with whoever I talked to last 
<laughs> because, you know, they all have, everybody has, well, look at this scripture that proves pre, look at this scripture that proves post, so forth. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, there's a scripture, uh, I think it's First Thessalonians 5, 9, God has not appointed us to suffer wrath, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, <clears throat> he talks about in an instant, you know, um, pretty much the first thing that's going to happen is that, you know, I'm going to come down and bring up our saints. The rapture is going to happen. So, but I totally agree, you know, number one, just because you are post, um, I'm never going to say it's not true. Mm -hmm. I have a leaning, and I think it's okay to have a leaning. Mm -hmm. But here's mm -hmm. the thing. Like you said, uh, if, it's, if it's pre, you're happy. Awesome. If it's post, you better be ready. Right. And Jesus would always say, mid? whoever holds out <laughs> to the end yeah. will be saved. Shall be saved. Yeah. And it's really church. There's going to be suffering. There is going to be time. Right now, Jesus said, in the world you'll have tribulation. We have yeah. tribulation now. Well, we're yeah. talking about the tribulation, and what we're having now is nothing compared to yeah, that's, what that's, that's going to be. Well, he said and on that, the latter part of that verse, but be of good cheer for I, I have, overcome have, the have world. past tense, yeah. overcome the world. Uh -huh. So, but we need to be ready. We need to be prepared to hold out to the end. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Well, listen, uh, you, you, you're leading us into another topic I want to get into. You mentioned the word suffering, mm -hmm. and I want to talk about that, but I think right now is a good place to take a break. We're going to pause for just a few minutes and stay with us. This word suffering, it's, it's pretty broad, it's pretty general, but we want to go down into the weeds with it right after we come back. <laughs> Don't go away, there's still a lot more discussion to come on this episode of Life Questions. But first, do you have a question for a future show? Email it to lifequestions at WTLW.com or call us 419-339-4444. You can also suggest pastures you feel would be a good fit for our panel. Again, send your question ideas and pasture suggestions to lifequestions at WTLW.com. Now back to the discussion. Well, we are back, and um, as promised, we want to get into the broad, general question of suffering, but we want to be more specific about it. We, we got a question from a viewer, and let me just read this question to you. It says, what does it mean to suffer for Jesus? That is very broad, very general, isn't it? Uh, if we take this down into the weeds, where, where do we go with this? What does this mean to suffer for Jesus? Well, you know, I, I think I'll start on that. Um, I think a lot of people trip up on suffering from a lot of standpoints. And um, one thing that's helped me is um, to understand the difference between Christ's uh, example in suffering and a substitution in suffering. What do you mean by substitution? Well, he hung on the cross uh -huh. oh, oh, that type for of our sicknesses yes, yes, yes. and our diseases. So some people will say, well, I'm sick and I'm suffering for Jesus. No, Jesus took your sicknesses. However, you will suffer for Christ, and that's called persecution. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we have to understand what Jesus died on the cross to redeem us from. And he did not uh, promise us a bed of roses. He said, you know, in this world you'll have tribu tribulation, mm -hmm. just like mm -hmm. we said in the last mm -hmm. segment, right? Um, and uh, the, the, the scripture in 1 Peter, I won't, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but I just have it here in um, chapter 2. He says basically, you know, what credit is it when you sin and are harshly treated? Um, and you endure it with patience, but when you do what's right and suffer for it, you know, you're following the example of Christ. I'm, I'm paraphrasing that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, no deceit was found in his <coughs> mouth. He didn't retaliate when he was uh, misused and exactly. abused and so forth. Um, and as, you know, so he leads you an example for you to follow in his steps, okay, who committed no sin and so forth and so on. And then right after that, okay, uh, he, he, you know, he committed himself to him who judges righteously, and he himself bore our sins on the body on the cross so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness, for our, by his wounds you have been healed. Mm -hmm. So right in that same verse, you have Christ's example in suffering, mm -hmm. and then you have his substitution in suffering. So we have to understand through the Bible, I think, where is his example and where is his uh, substitution. And basically, in a nutshell, really, uh, when you say suffer, you have to qualify that. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's is it why persecution? Mm -hmm, like Paul's mm -hmm. thorn in the flesh. Mm -hmm. I'll be controversial here. Paul's thorn in the flesh was not a sickness. It was persecution because if you read in there, right after he says thorn in the flesh, so I will therefore gladly put up with 
persecution. Yeah. If yeah. you see, yeah. he has a long list. And in the chapter before his thorn in the flesh, he talked about how was shipwrecked, false brethren, and yeah. so forth. Yeah. So we have to look at, at things yeah. in, in the right way. You are being controversial. <laughs> it's just like you said. <laughs> That's very good, though, isn't it? That's very good, very well said. Yes. Anybody have any other different viewpoints, a different slant on that? I just think it's so difficult for us to truly understand suffering, especially in this country, because, because we haven't experienced uh, suffering like like As a many nation. other places around the world. But you talk about persecution. Persecution, there yes. There you go. You have to, you have um, to qualify. Sure. Um, but but there, I mean, that's one form of suffering. Mm -hmm. yeah, so um, we're so blessed. We're so wealthy. We, we don't suffer hunger. We don't suffer a lot of different things right. that that happen other places. And so, so it's, it's difficult for us to understand what true suffering looks like. Uh, for many Christians, suffering is just being called uh, a Bible thumper or a, a Jesus freak or right. something mm -hmm. along that line. And, right. and, you know, that's pretty mild when it comes yeah, to right. suffering. What about the, uh, the discipline it takes sometimes to hold your peace, to keep your mouth <laughs> shut? Yeah. <right? laughs> when, you know, when you have the words to say, you know how to defend yourself, but you feel within your spirit that the, the Lord is saying, <laughs> you know, calm down, calm down. You know, uh, that's, isn't that a form of suffering uh, of sorts? It sure of is. Sorts in it terms sure of persecution? Is. I remember when we had the grandson of the Ayatollah, the original Ayatollah mm -hmm. of Iran mm -hmm. over at the Converge Unity Service. Yeah. And a lot of the churches went and uh, par participated in that service. And, he's, and he went through immense suffering. And, you know, of course, in Iran, there's a huge number of, Christian groups that are meeting in oh, secret. Yes. Yes. And, um, but he said, you know, and, and he talked about the horrible things that happened to him when they discovered him, you know, that he was a Christian and so forth. But he said, we're praying for you all in, the, in America. You know, you pray for us. We're praying for you because, you know, when, um, you know, when I'm weak, then I'm strong. Yes. You know, the more you beat me, the more of life, the, the resurrection life of Christ comes in me. And there's a lot of scriptures that talk about the worse it gets, the more the power of the Holy Spirit comes out through you and the, more, and the stronger you get. Mm -hmm. But that is suffering for Jesus. I, I would say that, that suffering is a, a treasure jewel in the hand of the Father that He gives as a gift to His people. And so I would say that thorn, and I would differ slightly from Pastor Mike. We've had wonderful conversations <laughs> on this, and we still love one another <laughs> tremendously. And that is uh, God allows, he either, I would say this, He either plans purposes or permits our suffering on every level to include persecution, but this could be sure. emotional trauma, fear, physical trauma, grief, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and we're told to count it all joy when you fall into manifold mm -hmm. temptation. Mm -hmm. So I would say from person to person, but I think also we're in the presence of the spiritual realm. So we see that, the, that angels, demons, they all factor into this. And, and God allows these things for one reason and one reason only, and that is so that we lean on Him and not ourselves. The author of Psalm 119 verses, uh, let me just make sure I get these right, 67 and 71 says, it was good for me that I have been afflicted so that I might learn your word. And interestingly <laughs> enough, the, the thorn that Paul talked about, uh, and again, it just slightly differ from Pastor Mike here, is that it says it was a messenger of Satan. So my thought is... Sent to buffet him. Sent to buffet him. So yeah, it's an angel, yeah. it's a demon, it's a minion. Sure. And whether with a flesh face on or not, it's still from the spirit realm. And it's causing him to cry out for deliverance. Oh, and yes. God does not deliver him. Uh -huh. God does not deliver him. He says, my grace is sufficient. So this is why I believe that suffering is so valuable to God. Because suffering strikes at our flesh the, 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 th the mind mm -hmm. that is, mm -hmm. that is uh, tilted to treasure the things of earth more. Because remember, we're pilgrims, we're passing through. And there's no greater tool, I believe, than suffering to strike at our humanity, to cause us to reach up to God and say, God, I need you here. And Reaching up to God, right there. Yeah, it, it really is. It, unfortunately, uh, we're, we're not too self-motivated all the time mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> to reach up and say, God, I really need you. But suffering has the ability to do that. So we see also in uh, Romans chapter 5, verse 1, it says, we glory in tribulations. Why? Because he gives us the process to hope. He says, because tribulation produces perseverance and perseverance produces character mm -hmm. and character produces hope. So I say this, that 
the road to hope is cut through the granite of the grief of life. Mm. And that is God has allowed these. It, it, and Pastor Mike and I, we, we disagree on, well, does God plan it or does he purpose it? <laughs> it, it regardless, he has allowed it. We know that he has permitted it. And because he has permitted it, he said that all things work together for the good to those that love uh, him and are called according to his purpose. Last verse, and then I'll, I'll, I'll let anyone else talk. But uh, 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 3 talks about that uh, Paul said, I, I am so convinced that the sufferings of this time are not worthy to be compared. Now, yeah. listen to what he says. Yeah. But they're working for us a greater weight. of They're working. So... Are your sufferings, it, 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 the little, the less you suffer, the less glory that you'll stand in, glo- that you'll have in glory. Amen. The more you suffer, the more glory that you'll have. And again, my, I guess the, the biggest difference is I say that the, the gamut of suffering goes from the spiritual realm down to the physical realm. So you can have depression, guilt, sorrow, grief, all of those things are permitted. Mm-hmm. I would even maybe say planned by the Father so that you would say, God, I, I really need you right now. This, this thorn is working in me. So whether it is physical persecution or spiritual, we just say, God, I need your grace to be sufficient yeah. for me. Remember when you were a kid and you, you liked Twinkies? Oh yeah. With that, that, um, <laughs> that, uh, that white substance inside, if you squeeze it, it would just ooze <laughs> out, right? Yeah. This is yeah. what suffering does. Yeah. But I when you're squeezed you know, in suffering, the real character comes, comes out. out. But again, when you leave the door open, the sum- I, I agree with everything you're saying, except when you leave it open and put sickness in there in the same bag and uh-huh, say, uh-huh. put sickness and tribulation and suffering for Christ and emotional stress, and you put it all in one bag and call that suffering and you pour it all out, out on the table called suffering and you leave sickness in there, then this lady here, yeah, I know what you're saying. the door is open for sickness to be enforced. Why would Christ die on the, on the cross and have the strength take our later, sicknesses uh-huh. and then meet it out? Yeah, yeah. It's, you know, and have and, the stripes laid at his back. That's contradictory. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, and the, and the thing is, is that he, um, you know, to, to get sick really is, is from the devil. God allows sin too, but it doesn't mean he sponsors sin. Mm-hmm. It doesn't mean that Christ didn't die for our sin, mm-hmm. but he allows it. So we can't say, well, God allows it, therefore I'm going to accept it because it's from God. See, that's, that's, that line of thinking goes, and that's yeah, why I think I, we have to take I would really agree the example because, and the suffering. Because, now, here, here's, I think, Mike, I agree with you, because yeah. whether he's planned it, maybe as I would see it, or whether he's allowed it, we have to take the same stance in regards to faith that by his stripes, I was healed. I think mm-hmm. at the end of the day, that's right. where we need to For agree. Sickness. That's yeah. right, yeah. and anyone else. Yeah. That, and I know yeah. you agree with that too. So, but, um, so, yeah. yeah. And, and, and healing is the children's bread. I, yeah. I know that as well. Yeah. And uh, we have that claim we have that claim for healing and deliverance uh, because of the fact that his, the stripes were laid at his back. There is, um, you know, there's a scripture too here, not a scripture, I'm sorry, there's a question here uh, that someone asks, uh, my husband spent many years uh, verbally abusing mm-hmm. her. And she said, I didn't divorce her because I did not feel it would be right. She says he's a much different individual now. And she says, now I'm glad I did not divorce him. But she's discovering that she's still very hurt from those abusive years. She doesn't know how to heal from that. And, and because of this, she thinks it, it's causing division in the marriage. Is this because she doesn't know how to heal? Is this because she refuses to forgive? And I'm not trying to get you to be a judge here, <laughs> but what circumstances come into play here that we need to watch out for in our lives? And how can we help this woman that wrote this question in. Yeah, well, I, I think that uh, as we address this question uh, specifically, uh, both of those come into play that, that there is probably a lack of forgiveness and, and there needs to be some healing uh, that needs to take place in here yet. I, I was sort of um, drawn to this question because uh, I sort of went through that same thing myself and I was sort of that guy in there. Um, so um, there was a lot of healing that needed to take place in our marriage. And, um, and we couldn't do it on our own, actually. We had to actually get some help to, to work through it a little bit. And, um, 
And I think probably the biggest thing was when I finally came to a relationship with Jesus Christ in my own life. And, and it doesn't say that, that this man actually came to a relationship with Christ or, or was born again. It just says he is different now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think we all change as we get older. Um, but, but maybe that's what he needs to look at at this point is a relationship with Jesus so that, so that he can be uh, transformed to where he can understand what she went through yeah. in the past. And Very good. Will that help her? <coughs> will, that, will that help heal her? Well, it helped my wife a lot. So Did I it really? Say that. Okay, yeah, great. Sure. That's personal experience. Any other comments? Any other well, slants I, on that? I, I kind of preached on this Sunday. Ah, and uh, I actually I was talking about Joseph and his, when his brothers came, I mean, he had a perfect, perfect opportunity to turn his brothers into two halves. Yes. And he did not do that. And when Jacob finally died and the brothers thought that uh, now Joseph is going to get even with us, he made this comment. He says uh, in Genesis 50, he says, but Joseph said to them, do not be afraid. Am I in the place of God? You intended to harm me, but God intended it to accomplish what is being done in the saving of many lives. So then do not be afraid. I'll provide for you and your children. And he reassured him and he spoke. So he says, essentially he's saying what you intended for good, you know, God turned around. Well, what, what you, you intended for evil, evil mm -hmm. God intended for good. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I was sharing that Sunday in regards to, okay, circumstances that we go through we're talking about persecution whatnot how god uses that many times uh, mm -hmm. for his glory now it looks like this individual followed what the scripture said in corinthians where it talks about through your for a woman through your good works and that he will see uh, your life and that he will he will change so what i so i i i commend her on that a couple questions come to my mind is, okay, let's say he didn't change. So then as a Christian, are you supposed to stay with him and be abused? Mm -hmm. that, and we tried to answer that as well. You know, scriptures does talk about separation. It is there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so how long do you allow this to last? Now, she made the comment, um, I still hurt. Yeah, you will. It's human. You're human. Mm -hmm. and, okay. But I do believe that God can heal you of that. Mm -hmm. He can very easily heal you of that if you continue to give him the glory. We're going to have to leave it at that. Yeah. You know what? I think we're going to have to carry this over to the show next week because um, yeah. we're on to a good role here. We're out of time for this show, but we want to deal more with suffering and healing and also the definition of suffering as has been brought out. So stay tuned for next week's program. We'll come back with this and much, much more. Till then, I'm Bill Harris. Bye-bye for now. You've been watching TV44's newest locally produced program, Life Questions. Now we'd like your feedback. What did you enjoy about this show and what would you like to see more? Perhaps you have your own questions you'd like us to pose to our panel of pastors in a future show. Submit your questions now by email to lifequestions at wtlw.com or call us with your thoughts. We are able to discuss relevant topics with local pastors right here in the TV44 studio thanks to your financial support. Now is an excellent time to make a one-time gift to TV44 or consider becoming a monthly donor. 100% of your donation stays right here at TV44 and is used to spread the family-friendly, life-changing message of Jesus Christ. Secure donations can be made online at WTLW.com, by phone, by mail, or in person. Again, share your questions for consideration for future shows or just contact us with your comments at lifequestions at WTLW.com.